Welcome to this training. I am Erica Wiley, co-founder and president of Profit Geeks. And this training today is on using Eventbrite to create events. You see I'm already logged in. I've created an account at eventbrite.com. It's pretty straightforward. Once you create an, um, create an account, forgive me, you can click the button that says create an event. And this is what will appear on your screen. So we're just going to work through this form and the steps together. Begin with naming the event. I'm going to call it Fantastic Event. Um, location, you can state an address. Uh, it's powered by Google, so it'll pull up the location. Or you can name a place. I'm going to say it's at Prana, which is a lounge in New York City. And you can see this is pre populating uh, the address data as well as the map. You can click this checkbox to not have this map show up on the event page, but I think it's helpful up to you and what you prefer. Over here we're going to go state for the event. I'm going to say it's April 1st at 7 p.m. till 10 and it's a one day. It's not going into the next day so we can leave this alone. I'm going to go ahead and choose a logo to upload right there. Alright, we've got our logo and I'm going to type in the description you might see over here this nice little gray box. If you're having a hard time um, figuring out how to write your description, you can see their FAQs. Otherwise, as you can see, this layout is very similar to what you're used to seeing in a word processor or even in your email. So these are all these should all be familiar to you. I'm not going to go into uh, doing a description there, but you can put that in there and format it however you like. It will automatically say you are the event organizer since it's your account. However, you can edit and change this. If you would like to add in your profile links, you do so by checking this box and entering in the info for your uh, social media accounts. This is helpful because it will show up on the event page. People can choose to contact you, which is nice in case people have questions. More of a personal way than them having to send an email. We're going to jump into how to create tickets. We're going to assume this is a paid ticket. Let's create two kinds of tickets. First, we're going to do an early bird. We'll say there are 20 available at $20. We're going to go ahead and click on this little cog icon. It's going to pull down the settings. If you want, you can add an additional description, but that's not necessary. You then indicate how this ticket can be purchased. Because it's an early bird, we're going to deselect the at the door option. The next is to decide what you're going to do with the Eventbrite service. You can pass it on to the buyer, which as you can see here tells you the buyer's total. We said the super early bird tickets were 20 bucks, so their total is 2209 if you pass the fee on to them. If you absorb the fee, they only pay $20, or you can split the fee between you and them. I recommend absorbing the fee because it lowers any objections to the sale. We'll assume that this is starting today. So the ticket sales start today. And um, we'll say they go on sale at 10 p.m. And because they're early birds and the event is on the 5th, we're going to end them on March 12th. And what I want to do is I want to make this hidden. And I'm going to click Add Auto Hide Schedule because I want this early bird ticket to be hidden after it's no longer available. This is a matter of preference. Um, by leaving it up, what you can do is show the buyer that they missed out on a chance to buy it at a lower price, and this might prompt them to respond earlier to your next event, or it could create resistance to sale. Um, so I choose to have it hidden so that they only see the general admission price at that time. All right, now we're going to scroll up and we're going to add our second ticket type, which is going to be RSVP. You could also call this general admission. We're going to say there's 50 of those available at $30 a piece. Again, we're going to click on that little settings um, cog icon so that we can adjust these. If you want it to be available to buy at the door, you can leave that up. If not, you can check it. Again, we want to um, select how you want the fees dealt with. And these are going to become available on 
13th after the early bird ends. And they'll go until the day of. Maximum here, uh, this is how many tickets one purchaser can order. So if you don't want people to be able to buy more than six tickets or something like that, you can control that here. Okay, that includes creating our tickets. The last is, do we want the page to be public or private? The difference is, if it's public, it will show up within the Eventbrite search as well as search engines. You want to pick the type of event. Let's assume this is a class or training or workshop you're doing. And then you can select the uh, topic. This would be more like the, the industry, if you will. Let's assume this is a health and wellness workshop. You can also choose to show the number of remaining tickets on the registration page. I advise leaving this off in the beginning until you have less seats available because right now we just set up an event for 70 attendees. So if we show that there's 70 tickets available, that's going to take away from the urgency. If we turn this on later when there are only 20 tickets or less available, then that's going to create some urgency because people are going to realize I better get my spot before it's gone. Let's go ahead and make our event live. Awesome. So we now have an event link. This is what you would send out to people. Uh, it lets you know that you're going to have to link in your payment processing, how you want to receive that money back from them. It, of course, gives you tips on how to send out invites, publicize the event, and so forth. So this is the dashboard that you'll see when you log in, when you have an event. Um, it's specific to this event. Again, it gives you the link right there that you can copy. It will show you how many tickets are sold. It will show you the number of sales grossly as well as net, what you are getting after the fees are paid. And you can look at other data like how many visits to the page and how many invitations have been opened. Um, we're actually going to jump over to the invitations link right here on the left-hand side because they have a neat hook with MailChimp if you use MailChimp for opt-in for your email campaigns, you can go ahead and use this link right here. It will bring you to your MailChimp account, and it will automatically pull in all this data um, for the invitation. And all you have to do is just campaign, pick your list, and send it. So it's a huge time saver if you are using MailChimp. Uh, next, I want to go to Promotions, because you may want to know how to set up a code. And this could be good for affiliates or for sponsors. And let's say you have, um, we'll just call it referral. So you, let's call it bring a friend. Let's say, oops, sorry about that. Let's say you want to offer a discount to people who bring a friend. You just create a code. You can decide whether it is a um, flat discount. So is it a dollar amount or is it a percentage? Let's say it's a 25% off the ticket price. And you can pick which tickets this applies to. Do you want it to apply to the early bird, or do you only want it to apply to the RSVP? You can choose how you want to do that. You can also um, choose how many times it could be used. This is a really neat feature. So let's say you're just trying to get people in seats, um, so you really just want to use this coupon five times, just to kind of boost um, the attendance. Whatever that number is, you can add it in right there. You can also limit when this coupon would be available. So you could even have it expire in a week. Um, so we could change that right there. So let's go ahead and save that. And now here your um, discount code, the amount that it's for, when it starts, when it ends. And it shows you how many left are available. So as people start to use this, you'll see this number adjust to only two out of five available and so forth. Um, everything here is pretty straightforward as you continue along, Facebook integration, just more ways that you can get the event out there. Uh, the one last thing I want to call your attention to is the order form, because over here you can use this handy feature to collect information about your ticket buyer um, or all the attendees. This is really great to have because it's the best time to ask people questions. Being a purchase, people expect that they're going to have to divulge information. So you can select what of their info you would like to collect, what is required, and you can even add your own questions. So let's say your question is, what time of day do you prefer to attend events? 
I'm going to make this um, a radio button means only one can be selected. So we're going to say evening, um, excuse me, morning, afternoon, evening. And you can make more than three choices just selecting this little button right here, and that will replicate these boxes. But let's say you wanted to gauge when's a good time to do your events and if you're really going to get high attendance with a specific time. And then we can go ahead and save that, and this will become part of the registration form. So let's take a minute to look at the event we just created. This is the page. You've got the icon over here. It's like their Facebook integration is a little bit broken. Um, the name of the event, who's the host, in this case me, the date, location, the types of tickets. Actually, it looks like we did not set the early bird correctly because that should be previewing right here. Um, so I'm going to go back and take a look at that. Okay. Let's go just take a quick peek what happened early bird. Okay, it's hidden right now, so let's check out those settings. Um, did I not say how many were available? There were 20 available. Oh, okay, because it's not starting this sale until 10 p.m. I forgot we did that. So actually, let's adjust that so that you can see it there. All right, perfect. So now I have it at 5.30. Now we can see it. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And then we can refresh this page. Okay. Obviously, I am not. I'm missing something here. Well, the event to start today. I wonder if this has to do with. Let's just say it started yesterday. Maybe we have a uh, time zone issue. I just skip it to tomorrow. Right, let's scroll down and see if it's showing up. It's viewable now. Okay, yes, so nothing is hidden. We should be able to see. There we go. Okay, we've got the early bird, and as you can see here, it shows that the um, RSVP general admission has not started yet, so they don't even have an option to buy that. And then, of course, if they want to enter the discount code that uh, you've given that out, they can do that there. Okay, so <laughs> just to briefly recap, I just want to make sure I didn't lose you any lose you anywhere. We click Create an Event. We get this page. We do the title. We do the location. We do the date. Pop in a logo if you have one. Pop in a description create the tickets. I think we went pretty robustly through that. Um, and then decide the category. Again, this has been an, an Eventbrite event creating training uh, by Erica Wiley at ProfitGeeks. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you found this useful.